Hello, this is Jenny at Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I have another video in my Christmas Card and Craft series for 2021. My video today is an art journal page and I will be using all scrapbook paper. Some of this paper is older than some of my children. So let's just put that out there. I tend to hoard pretty things. I am starting with a piece of mixed media paper that is five and a half by eight and a half inches approximately. And I want to cover it with this piece of paper. It's a red background and it says, ho, ho, ho. And nowhere in my brain until this page was finished did I think, yeah, red's not the right color for this. Just go with me for a minute and you'll see why. I have also trimmed out these little um, postage stamp images. And then I have a postage stamp punch. That's kind of a tongue twister that I added a couple of non-image stamps for. I have a word block and a focal image. Now this focal image is a little vintagey Santa and I have had him in my scrapbook paper stash for probably 10 years. Yeah, he's that old. It was one of the very first Christmas papers I bought from Stampin' Up. He's older than some of my children. Yeah, we'll just put that there. To begin, I am going to add some gel medium to my mixed media paper with a chip brush. So I saw Bea Grob on YouTube using a chip brush to put matte gel or gel medium down on her art journal page. And it dawned on me, well, duh, why am I using a one inch brush to put down gel medium over an entire art journal page? Why did I not know before I saw somebody else doing it that there's a better way to do it than this? I don't know. Just proves that we all have something to, to learn. <laughs> Anyway, now that I have that gel medium down, I am going to go ahead and put this ho 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 paper on top of my art journal page. And I am just going to rub my hands all the way around. I'm specifically trying to get the edges and the corners to make sure that the paper is ad adhered well and that the edges are sealing. You know, and it, it does take a couple of days when you're using a liquid medium for everything to really cure well. And I want to flip that over and add some pressure onto the back. And when I'm pretty sure, pretty confident, I've got good pressure down there, I am going to flip it over and add some gel medium to the front of the page. I am doing this to make my art journal page just a little bit um, non-porous so that any type of shading or um, ink blending that I want to do will be a little bit easier. Um, this gel medium dries matte so it will not be shiny. It will be completely clear and matte and just the perfect work surface for me and my style of art journaling. I know a lot of people like shiny things and sometimes, don't let, get me wrong, I like the bling, just not on my art journal surfaces usually. So now that I have gone ahead and dried this, which I did cut that out because, you know, drying, watching glue dry, super exciting. I will trim the scrapbook paper off of my art journal page and make sure that I've got all my corners sealed and glued nice and tight. And the paper is kind of buckled and bowed a little bit from the heat from drying it. So I'm just going to kind of try and bend that into the curve a little bit and straighten it out. So I want to add a little bit of distressing or a little bit of vintaging aging to the edge of this art journal page. And for some reason, I grabbed my Distress Oxide ink. Now, I'm not sure why I did that. Um, Distress Oxide inks have this kind of chalky finish, which I don't really love. The, the only reason, to be real here, that I bought Distress Oxide inks is because when you're using them with water, you can add colors on top of each other to get really cool looks without getting that muddy color. So I'm not sure why I grabbed this particular type of ink. I probably should have grabbed like an archival ink that is, you know, waterproof. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and add some ink to the edges of these folk, folk, faux <laughs> postage stamps and the little stamped pieces that I cut out for very, um, variety. There we go. There's the word. <laughs> and I'm just going to continue to, to add this. I wanted the brown edges so that it would be kind of that vintage look to kind of go along with the Santa Claus. I just kind of picked the wrong medium for that. It's okay. I have a solution to this problem later on in the video though. Most of this video is done in real time, except for that ink blending. I sped that up and this kind of part where I'm trying to figure out where everything goes. I sped that up too, because it's kind of fidgety, it's kind of fidgety. One thing I did not take into account was how big the focal image on my page is. 
So I got all these stamps in place and then just started gluing them on. Didn't even pay attention to the fact that my Santa Claus is almost the whole size of this page. So, you know, spoiler alert, I did have to rearrange some things. Okay, have to is probably not the right word. I did because I wanted to. <laughs> I'm trying to instill in my children the difference between wants and needs, have to's and want to's. <laughs> So I didn't have to change anything. I wanted to change something. I am just using a little bit of gel medium and a smaller paintbrush or yeah, paintbrush to adhere these um, folk, folk, faux <laughs> postage stamps to my art journal page. For some reason, that word faux is really off today. And I can't just say these stamps because they're not like a stamp like we're used to using in the craft world, right? They're stamps <laughs> or faux stamps. Okay, I digress. And here is where I kind of realized that maybe I chose the wrong color for my background. And yet I didn't stop and change. I just kept going. Yeah, I just kept going. I, I thought as I was putting down that little reindeer postage stamp, I thought there's a lot of red on this page and Santa Claus has a red suit. But yeah, I just kept going. So if I could do one thing different with this page, I would probably put a green or a cream color background, but I digress. So here is how I am correcting that wrong medium. Distress and Tim Ranger make this um, glaze. It is, um, let me see what it's really called. It's called Distress Micro Glaze. And if you adhere it with the little foam sponge over the top of the Distress ink, it makes it not as reactive to water. I don't know that it makes it like completely water fast like an archival ink, but it does make it um, not smudge with water or other mediums. And it takes away that kind of um, chalky finish and gives it more of a, a deeper color finish. And you can kind of see where I have added the Distress Glaze. It does dry back and you don't see that at all. Once it's dry, you can't see the foam marks on the page at all. I decided to go ahead and do that to my quilt block and my focal image as well, just in case I needed to add anything, you know, like liquid adhesive to glue it down. Yes. <laughs> okay. So here is where I realized that my Santa was going to cover up almost all of those little postage stamps. So instead of worrying about that, I said, okay, I'm going to think about that in a minute after I put some distress glaze on my Santa edges. Because I have ink blended the edges of this image too to kind of hide that white core paper. And I didn't want the Distress Oxide ink bleeding into the image when I used the gel medium to adhere it to the art journal page. See, clearly I was not thinking, I was just crafting. And there's nothing wrong with that. Crafting for the sake of crafting is what I do. And all of my YouTube videos are just you just happen to get video footage of me crafting for the sake of crafting. Okay, so I am going to take my paintbrush here and add a little bit of gel medium to the back of my Santa image. And still, I haven't quite figured out how I am going to address the fact that I'm covering up all of those little postage stamps. And yeah, it covers like the whole thing. Now I, I could have left it there because it kind of pops the Santa Claus up off the back page, especially where the back is red, but I like the postage stamp and I wanted to be able to see it. So thankfully gel medium is a liquid adhesive and there's a little bit of, I won't call it wiggle room because obviously you can tell I ripped the background, but I'm covering it up. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I did rip rip that one little postage stamp a little bit, but again, I'm going to cover that up as well. So, you know, in all in all, I think it turned out just fine. I like how it turned out. Um, I, I could do a couple things differently, but I feel like that anytime we look at our finished project, we kind of think that we're thinking, Oh, I would have, I could have, I should have. And, um, maybe I just need to be a little bit more satisfied with my projects and not worry so much about the things I could have done different or better. But this is kind of another fiddly part. Probably should have sped this up too, but I didn't because we're getting to the end of the video. I am just gonna kind of pick up the edges of this Santa and slip this stamp underneath 
his little arm and his jacket there. And then I will cover up the torn edge with that other little stamp and voila, everything is better now, right? Okay, so moving right along. Um, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. Once I get to 100 subscribers, I can actually give my my YouTube channel a name, not just a random URL. And that would be super fun for me. Just one little goal. I'm about 25 viewers off of that mark. So, hey, help me out. Subscribe to my channel. I would also love it if you shared my channel with somebody else who you thought might enjoy my random babbling and or the art journal and the card projects. Probably more the latter than the former, but you know, who knows? <laughs> Once I have all my stamps, my postage stamps put back down, I am going to go over them with a little bit of gel medium just to make sure that they are firmly adhered now that I have fidgeted with them. And I'm going to go ahead and add my quote block. And it says, Santa comes but once a year to bring us all his holiday cheer. So if you don't know me, Santa is my second favorite thing about Christmas. Jesus is the first favorite thing. Santa is my second favorite thing about Christmas. I have so many Santas and I love them all. And I can't decide what I want to do with this page if I want to put it in my art journal book or if I want to frame it and put it on my wall. I haven't decided yet. That's how come there's no holes punched in it to go to my art journal page. Yeah, I love Santas. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Here are some close-ups of the images so that you can see how I kind of ink them and that the, dis the glaze doesn't keep showing through up. I have also included some other videos for you to watch and a subscribe button so that you can help me reach my goal of 100 subscribers. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Have a really great day.